Hello everyone, and welcome to the Dharma Dhaba. Today we'll be doing a fun little video on climate change. Who is responsible? Climate change is a very real problem, but I'm going to skip the convincing part hoping you believe in the science. In short, here's what various ice age cycles did, and here's what humans are doing. Pretty bad, right? We're going to pay a heavy price, either now or later. The question is, who needs to pay that price? Is this fella in the same boat as this fella? They're both going to need boats pretty soon, am I right? Get it? Because of rising sea levels? It sounded better in my head. Let's use data to get to the bottom of this. These are the annual emissions by country. In 2017, China and the US were the largest emitters of CO2 in the world. As always, Europe is better than you. And we have our winners! Just kidding. This data doesn't give us the whole story. For one, European countries are so small that they seem to be doing better on this map than they actually are. The land area and population of Europe are comparable to India, so let's look at the emissions per person instead. There we go. Damn, North America. We'll get back to you. But wait! Developing countries like China have lots of factories that are either run by Western companies or for Western consumers. China imports emissions from developed countries and gets a bad rep for it. Always taking one for the team, China. Let's check how much of these emissions are imported or exported. In short, blue is good and red is bad. Now, if we take this into account per capita, this is what we end up with. For simplicity, I've grouped the per capita data of Europe's big five economies, Germany, France, the UK, Italy, and Spain, into the European five. First of all, Africa and India, you guys are the best. Maybe you should stop throwing garbage on the street so you can look better for the camera, like Canada. Europe, China, and Russia are doing all right. North America, Australia, and Japan are insane. Damn it, Japan, why do you always take everything to the extreme? I still love anime, though. You could say that India and China only look small because of high populations, and that their total emissions are still large, but the fact of the matter is that each person in a developed country needs a lot of land, resources, and waste to maintain their standard of living. If I had a country with just one person in it that produced 5% of the world's emissions, it would be terrible of me to say that I'm only producing 5% of the world's emissions, so I'm all good. I'm looking at you, Seth Rogen. Get it? Emissions? At least he's growing trees. So in terms of annual emissions, we have a clear picture, and we're almost done here. The thing is, we've only looked at carbon emissions for one year. But carbon doesn't just go into the atmosphere one year and then disappear the next. It's not the Backstreet Boys' comeback. According to NASA, carbon dioxide can remain in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. Remember that annual emissions map we looked at? Check it out in 1950. And in 1900. That's right, Europe and North America have more skeletons in their closet. You know, on top of all the real ones. They've both been emitting like there's no tomorrow for hundreds of years. If we account for all cumulative emissions until 2017, this is what the world looks like. Again, that's a lot of red for such tiny countries, and we need to adjust for per capita emissions here too. And voila! Our final cumulative per capita emissions by country. The average American is responsible for 1,250 tons of CO2 in today's atmosphere. America first, right? Let's put in perspective how insane this is. One single hardwood tree absorbs about one ton of CO2 in 40 years. To make up for the average American's carbon debt, 
you'd need a thousand hardwood trees to live for 50 years. Seth Rogen better start planting. The rest of the quote-unquote developed world isn't doing great either. China and India are barely visible. And as always, we can ignore Africa. Sorry for doubting you guys. So from this analysis, we have our winners in order. The USA, Canada, Europe's Big Five, Russia, and Australia. Let's take a moment of silence for the number of tree years one citizen of one of these countries has under their belt. These countries are overwhelmingly responsible for all CO2 emissions up to this day, and developed at everyone else's expense. Unfortunately, regardless of who the blame falls onto, we'll all have to deal with this together. In an upcoming video, we'll look at climate efforts around the world. I've been your host, Ashrit, and thanks for tuning in to Dharma Dhaba.